Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing TV. I'm Peter Switzer. Thanks for joining us. On the program tonight, I'm catching up with Adam Dawes of Shoreham Partners. I'm asking him about the impacts of the Israel-Iran conflict, as well as the inflation problem in the US and its impact on interest rates. It seems to me that both of these forces are negative forces for the US stock market, and of course, it's com coming back on our market as well. But what's the likelihood of a real conflict that could really rock the stock market? And also, is it likely that inflation will start to keep, uh, keep falling and that will be good for rate cuts and ultimately the stock market? These are big issues I'll be talking to Adam about. And then we'll look at three interesting companies one is called John's Ling Group. Uh, it's uh, ticker code is JLG. And then there's a company called Vulcan Energy in the lithium space, that's VUL. And then Calix, a company that Adam Dawes really likes. Three interesting companies that may well be in the buy zone. Uh, and they are not what you might call mainstream companies. And then I catch up with Michael Knox, the Chief Economist from Morgan's. Now, Michael is working out, he's been very good about doing this in the past, when an interest rate cut would start here in Australia. And also, what's likely to happen to the Aussie dollar. He's been one of the best predictors of the Aussie dollar, but he does think there are a few unusual things going on in the US that might delay the fall in the US dollar and the rise in the A dollar. But he does make a prediction of where the Aussie dollar will be over the next two and three years. Really important interview, particularly for you if you're thinking about hedging, your investments overseas. So that's the program. Let's kick off now with Adam Dawes of Shaw and Partners. Thanks for joining us, Adam. It's great to be here, Peter. Okay, I, I guess you're get, getting a few uh, phone calls from uh, clients today with the Iran-Israel threat and also the inflation problem as well. You know, what, yeah. what it means for interest rates and what it means for the stock market. Which one do you think is the biggest driver of the market down? Is it Israel, uh, uh, Iran, or is it the inflation concerns? Well, yeah, I think you're, I think you're, you're sort of right, right on both fronts. Yeah. We, we knew that through the weekend that there, were, that there was going to be these drone strikes uh, and these strikes were imminent and they actually sort of came in just as the US market was closing. So there was a there was a fair bit of warning that that was going to happen. And that was that knee-jerk reaction that you saw on the Dow, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ all sort of down 1.5%. But then, you know, you've got this issue with the tinderbox that's in the Middle East. But the US has been known or has known that Iran has been sending oil to Russia for over a couple of years now. But really what they've done is they, they've allowed it to happen because they have to keep that oil price lower. Because if you keep the oil price lower, then inflation doesn't get out of control. Mm -hmm. And so you're in this sort of uh, dichotomy of this, do you do it, damned if you do, damned if you don't, uh, with the US. So I think, I think first of all, I think it's definitely this uh, um, Iran and uh, um, you know that kind of the issues that are there. But then really then it slows on to what's going to happen in the US and how are they going to actually deal with this? Because th with them dealing with it, they have to be very, very careful because you know we just don't want to know. And I don't think the US is going to put boots on the ground. They'll never do that ever again. But they're fighting a couple of wars on certain fronts where they're just providing the Ukraine with lots of weapons. And obviously, they're going to be providing Israel with lots of weapons as well. So, mm. yeah, it's, it's a really tough one uh, to be. I think the inflation is going to be that overarching macro call that is what the market is going to be looking at. Um, there has been some news just coming off the news wires uh, just a second ago saying that Iran thinks that the, that missile strike was pretty much done and dusted and that they're comfortable that they don't need to continue with that. Mm. So um, markets now rebounding a little bit and our market's really taken it in a stride today. I, I really thought that we were going to be down a lot more, yeah. but it really does predicate on oil and then inflation. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all pans out. You know, I uh, for the Switzer report this um, today, I, I actually looked at the, the the big occasions where a geopolitical threat really rocked the market, and the two big ones over the last 30, 40 years has been 
the invasion of Iraq in, into Kuwait. And of course, America yeah. responded there. And the other one was um, September 11, which was 2001. And what's mm. interesting about those two big uh, reactions where the drawdown was quite quite big, I think it was about 11% for uh, September 11, it was about 18% for Kuwait. But also uh, what surprised me when I started looking at the, the dates, they both coincided with recessions. So what what was driving the market down? Both things, the, the fear of the war, but there was a 1990 recession and then there was a, the dot-com recession. So all the other times when there have been major worries for the market, the market wasn't you know concerned about recession and we're not really concerned about recession now, which is ultimately a good thing for the overall impact of any serious geopolitical thing. Yeah, you're right. And that that sort of hard landing, soft landing or no landing sort of rhetoric is just, you know, it's it's pretty it's soft. It's definitely a soft landing, uh, you know, or no landing uh, at the moment. So, yeah, I think you're right. It, it does show that. And recession's not really on the cards unless the US, which they've got history of, stuffing up this uh, interest rate falls or sort of bringing those those uh, falls down. And I think, you know, the problem is with the Fed and the RBA, they're trying to control a narrative or they're trying to give us a narrative of what's going to happen. Now, remember, Phil Lowe came out with a narrative that there's going to be no interest rate rises until 2028. Mm. Now, obviously, that was totally wrong. That narrative was wrong. But I think the Fed is trying to keep that narrative moving that they are looking to reduce rates. But uh, it's going to be a little bit tougher when you've got more geopolitical tensions out there. Mm. The lesson is be careful of central bank narratives. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. <laughs> Let's go to some stocks now, mate. Um, this is an interesting one from our Boom Doom Zoom show. Somebody asked about this uh, JLG, John's Ling uh, Group. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of this business? Look, I think... Um, this is an interesting business where basically they're in the construction space, but they're more in the restoration and work for insurance companies or body corporates. Yeah. So if, in fact, when something goes wrong in your apartment block, that's what they sort of go out and do. They're sort of not building apartment blocks, but they're actually helping um, you know, get these kind of uh, fixing those kinds of things. Now, yeah. um, this is a stock that's gone from what, $9 down to sort of $6, even lower from where it is today. And look, they're building that they're building that revenue back up again through uh, strata titles and doing a lot of work for insurance side of things. Now they've got a little bit, or they had a lot to do with the Lismore floods, so there's lots of work that's going on there. But what I really like about this business is is that they've expanded into the US recently, and that recently there's on they're on a panel called Allstate. Now Allstate's one of the biggest insurers in the US. And basically, so they'll be they'll be used to do any kind of construction work or you know those kinds of things. So that means that that revenue could drive or go uh, a lot further in the U.S. Now we've had plenty of companies go to the U.S. and then basically come back with their tails between their legs. Yeah. So I really do hope that this works for uh, the Johns Ling Group. But overall, I think that should that US side of things should reignite some enthusiasm. It is quite thinly traded, so you've got to be a little bit careful with this one. And I just did a bit of a scan of sort of the broker consensus numbers. They've all sort of cut their price targets a little bit by one and a half. And I think Macquarie was the hardest. They've got price to cut their price target by 5% to around $7.40. But still gives us a bit of a uh, room on the upside for this one. And if you think yeah. that sort of catastrophe, that insurance kind of work is going to continue on, it might be another one to put on the watch list. I'm not going to say that I think it's a buy, but I think you should definitely put it on the watch list and see how this one trades because it's quite interesting. I hadn't really seen a lot of it, but looking at that business, there's a lot of apartments out there. There's a lot of stratas and there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So I think that that, that sits yeah. well with me and I'll definitely be putting this one on the watch list. Yeah, if all states got a lot of coverage of um, homes in the uh, hurricane belt of the USA, there could yeah. be a lot of work, couldn't there? A yeah, lot of work. absolutely. Let's go to Vulcan Energy, which is, um, I, I, wasn't it a trading halt last week, Vulcan? Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they've just started their uh, first concentrate of lithium in Germany. 
So the, the the stock actually rallied up quite nicely on the back of it. it's come back a little bit uh, now. But the like, Vulcans always talked about how it's uh, ESG friendly and it's going to be uh, one of those ones where it's got a green processing of lithium. Now they've done their first batch, uh, so it's actually it's taken it. They've taken it out of the lab and they've actually put it into production and they've got their first concentrate out of that. So I think that's a really big milestone for Vulcan. Obviously, this one was a darling uh, a couple of years ago and now yeah. it's fallen on harder times. But if they can prove this technology works going forward, they can roll that out. And that was that's something that's really interesting as well. Again, lithium, you'd be a little bit cautious at these levels. I still feel that PLS or IGO, they're the probably the better plays in that space. But for Vulcan, if they can prove this technology and to and to roll it out to further the market as such and get more lithium at at, at a an e, with an ESG side of things, I think this is definitely one that you want to keep on the watch list. Also, mm. it's interesting. I've been trying to work out um, part of the reason why lithium's having its challenges, and we know there's been oversupply, but we also know that there's been a bit of wavering when it comes to demand for electric vehicles for a variety of purposes like cost of living and all those sorts of things but and also a lot of people say well i prefer a hybrid than a, yes. an ev but i, I then ask myself the question well what kind of batteries do they have in hybrids they're all lithium, lithium batteries, batteries. <laughs> lithium batteries so it seems to me either way it's going to, it's going to be a world with lithium somewhere down the track yeah let's go to, let's go to a company called calyx a CXL. What's your view yeah. on that? I think this one's a this one's an absolute cracker. Um, so if I can say it's a table thumper, this one's been under a table what? A table thumper. Oh, oh I'm bang, okay. bang the table. I'm gonna say yeah. this is a great stock. Yeah. Uh, I've got a lot of money in this one. Um, I'm in a lot higher prices. This obviously has a very good ESG bent to it or, or green bent to it. Yeah. They came to the market where basically they were allowing uh, their, and they're doing some work with Pilbara Minerals as well. So that's a nice little segue. But um, the, the reason why I like this one, it does have that ESG bent. They uh, are one of their largest um, um, concrete manufacturers in the world. They've worked out how to take the heat out of cement production. Okay, now that's that's huge when you're producing tons and tons of CO2 as well as heat for these this concrete uh, going forward and cement. So they've got this technology and this technology can be moved across from cement to water to all different types of mining and all those kinds of things. And what they've done is they've got a royalty contract that's come through, which is um, which has got a, a floor on it, but it's also in per perpetuity. So in other words, it goes on forever, mm -hmm. that that contract will uh, go forward. There's there's certain ones uh, that they're working with, with Microsoft, they're working on some other deals as well. This is a great little business. It's just at the moment, just struggling. Uh, the, the the contracts that they've got are amazing. I'm not worried about that. It's a buy. I, I really like it. We've got a buy here at Shore and Partners. I, I think it's a fantastic business. I just think that it's been um, forgotten in the ESG side of things. We've, we've moved to growth in the market and we haven't really sort of come back to that green side of things. Mm -hmm. But when we do and the, and, the market, and the market starts to focus on that, I think that is going to be one that is definitely sh everybody should have in their portfolios. Yeah, Calyx is a, is a great yeah. little stock. And is it a potential takeover target given it's, it's a unique uh, in, uh, technology? Yeah, the technology is amazing because it's so simple. Like it's so simple, but uh, these guys have got the patents. They've got it all sort of sewn up, and the the royalty commissions that they're getting out of this is 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 just going to continue. So, um, yeah, I I do think that um, you, it is a takeover target. It's just one of those ones that sort of market's forgotten a little bit of. I haven't sold a single share. I, I'm 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 I haven't bought more. But I, I know that this thing is going to do very, very well. So it doesn't worry me that we're in a loss-making position in the portfolio. I'm going to stick with it because these guys know what they're doing. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great, it's a great business. Okay, mate. Thanks for joining us. See you in a few weeks' time. Thank you. It's great to be here. Adam Dawes, Shaw and Partners. And that's the program for non-subscribers to the Switzer Report. Coming up now will be an interview with Michael Knox, which purely will be for subscribers of the Switzer Report. Thanks for joining us anyway.